wing. Just a question on page seven uh, under bylaws 2009-172, a bylaw to temporarily remove the public right of passage over a highway. I believe that refers to Mewburn Road, and I want to make sure that it only refers uh, to the removal of the right of passage for ve motorized vehicles, that uh, pedestrian and uh, human powered vehicle traffic is still permitted? Mr. Clerk? Uh, yes, it does. Uh, that was the version that was signed based on the uh, changes that were made. Uh, I don't think we changed the actual title of the bylaw, but the content is uh, exactly as Council approved uh, regarding Mewburn Road. So that's been signed and uh, distributed to the appropriate parties. Okay, all those in favor of the motion? Thank you. Perry? At this time, I'm going to ask for any disclosures of a pecuniary interest by any members of Council. Councillor Peter Angelo. Thanks, Your Worship. A wire transfer on October 1st of the Niagara Catholic District School Board, my employer. Okay, so noted. And I have a conflict on check number 32, uh, sorry, 332344, payable to myself. Members of Council, we have some business recognition awards this evening. We'd like to recognize some outstanding businesses for their tenure in our city. And I'd like to first begin by saying Niagara Falls has a diverse base of business uh, businesses operating in our community, ranging from family-owned operations to national and international enterprises. The long-term success and ongoing investments made by both local entrepreneurs and international enterprises signals a strong vote of confidence in Niagara Falls as a choice of uh, location for business. Tonight, we will honor eight of these successful operations. Five are here uh, with us this evening. However, three companies were able, unable to attend. The first one who was not able to attend is Niagara Pattern. They're celebrating 25 years, along with Niagara Industrial Mall celebrating 25 years, and Hoco celebrating 50 years. We want to offer our congratulations to each of these companies and extend our best wishes to them for many more years of successful operation in our community. Now, I do have several others I'd like to make a presentation to, and I can begin uh, with my deputation out here. I'd first like to call upon Calfinger North America's president, Mr. Mark Woody, and his wife, Lynn, to come forward to receive our congratulations on 20 years of confidence and investment in our community. So if I can call Mark and his wife, Lynn. Calfinger North America began in 1989 in Niagara Falls, Ontario, where a crane sales service and manufacturing uh, facility was established. From its 10-acre, uh, 74,700-square-foot uh, facility, Calfinger coordinates its activities of assembling truck-mounted uh, knuckle boom cranes, uh, a product in sports parent distribution as well, and customer support center. In 2000, a sales distribution center was opened in Tiffin, Ohio, and Palfinger acquired its largest distributor, Tiffin Motor Crane, to strengthen its presence in the U.S. market. And over the years, North American, the North American product portfolio has steadily expanded, with uh, products such as the Palfinger truck-mounted forklift, the Palfinger container handling system, and the Escalon timber and recycling crane. Palfinger North America has become a market leader in the design and manufacturing of material handling equipment. The Palfinger North America Group was formed following Palfinger's acquisition of MVB Interlift, Omaha Standard Inc., and Automated Waste Equipment. The new partnerships with these companies uh, give Palfinger the additional product line, uh, multiple truck chassis pools, and a distribution network that meets the demands of key industries throughout North America and Latin America. Palfinger is now one of the leading truck equipment manufacturers offering a comprehensive uh, and the product the portfolio of cranes, hook lifts, cable hoists, fork lifts, lift gates, service bodies, and platforms. And through their choices of absolutes, they have developed the long-term strategy to position all Palfinger North American Group companies to make application for and obtain ENERGY STAR status by 2012. Uh, green initiatives will encompass all aspects of the Palfinger North American Group company activities from manufacturing to procurement, including new product developments, and Palfinger uh, employs currently 40 people at its location. So it's my privilege to present to Mark uh, this uh, award, if I may, for the years of service. And on behalf of members of council, 
celebrating your 20th anniversary, which uh, best wishes for many more years of success, 1989 to 2009, signed by myself and members of council. Congratulations, Thank Mark. You. Yeah, on behalf of Paul Fingers uh, International Company and uh, located in Salzburg, Austria is our headquarters worldwide and we have a lot of choices about where we could be or where we could work and our relationship with Niagara Falls has been not only good for our families and our employees but rewarding for our company. We thank you for all your support. Thank you. And we do as a council, the members of the public can sure will extend their congratulations. We have the privilege of meeting with the Balfinger family when they visit Niagara and they're very, very uh, classy people and it's always a pleasure to take time to visit the plant uh, as well. So thank you for your contribution to our city. Thank you. The next group is International Sewright Company, and I'd like to welcome President Lise Moreau and her daughter Bridget Moreau of International Sewright Company to come forward. Just one, okay. So Bridget? No, I'm not. Lise, oh, okay. Congratulations and thank you. So right, uh, International Sewright is a niche manufacturing operation that provides unique uh, safety clothing products to clients in Canada, USA, Australia, Germany, Singapore, and Turkey. And based on a practice of providing excellent customer service, the company offers a catalog of 240 high quality products from wrist guards and furnace hoods to shop coats, parkas, and welder's jackets. This three generation family business is currently managed by mother Lise and daughter Bridget Moreau. International Sewright, ISR, began in 1983 when an untapped market for the production of safety clothing was identified by Lise's mother, Claudette Capel. She saw that people working in the automotive, welding, and steel industries were complaining about clothing that didn't fit properly and didn't provide them with adequate protection on the job. She began her business in St. Catharines, but when the business started to grow, she purchased her current property on Don Muir in Niagara Falls. And since Lise has taken over the business, the company's market has grown to include clients in the USA, Australia, Germany, and Turkey. International Sewright is currently uh, uh, quoting jobs in Asia, South America, America, Europe, and the Middle East. The success of the company was acknowledged at the Niagara Entrepreneur of the Year Awards in 2004. International Sewright was uh, presented with the International Trade Award, one of 10 honors handed out to distinguished local companies. International Sewright is, is proud to produce clothes that keep workers safe and help employers uh, keep their workers' compensation claims to a minimum. So it's my pleasure to present to you this plaque as well in recognition of 25 years of service, actually of providing uh, your manufacturing process here in, in our city and providing jobs for our residents. Uh, celebrating your 25th anniversary, best wishes for many more years of success, 1983 to 2000. Congratulations. Thank you. in the past to get the company where it was in honor of my staff and sales people and everyone else. This is in recognition of everyone, not just one person. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'd now like to call upon Anthony B. to turn on. Is Anthony here? Owner of Nextera Substructures to uh, come forward and actually, is it your wife? Yes. Is it here? Hi. Nextera Structures, uh, Substructures Incorporated uh, is a heavy construction firm specializing in underground civil engineering solutions, including water main, sanitary sewer, and storm sewer installation. Over the years, in a competitive, tender driven business environment, Nextera has applied its civil construction know how in this capital intensive industry to compete or complete its projects to specification on time and on budget. In the last 25 years, Nextera has been responsible for hundreds of municipal service improvement projects of benefit to citizens, developers, and corporations. In 2007, Nextera completed phase one of the City of Niagara Falls' ambitious stormwater drainage management project in the old Clifton town, the town of Niagara Falls area, where one half kilometer of concrete storm sewer was installed in a 10-foot tall precast sections in bedrock. 
Currently, Nextera is completing installation of a 7-kilometer, 2-foot diameter transmission trunk water main straddling the St. Lawrence Seaway between the communities of St. Catharines and Niagara Lake for regional municipality of Niagara. And soon, Nextera will begin a new project with the city of Niagara Falls. Renewal of all municipal services on Drummond Road from Lundy's Lane to Dunn Street, scheduled for the winter spring of 2010, is the project we're talking about. The Vita Turner family is a second generation uh, constructor in the Niagara region. And I'm pleased to present this plaque to you as well, uh, celebrating their 25th anniversary. And again, best wishes for many more years of success. Signed, thank you, for by myself and members of the uh, council. this acknowledgement and I'd just like to uh, mention my father Alberto Vittaterna who uh, mentioned me in this business and taught me a very uh, a lot uh, both this business and uh, I'm just thankful for him and I wish you could be here today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the President and Vice President of Eckert Machines, Paul, and his wife Jenny Eckert. Machines Inc. is a, an independent Canadian-owned and operated machine sales and service agency. Eckert specializes in machinery for food processing and materials handling. The company began in 1959 as a subsidiary of an American company which was based in Niagara Falls, New York. The U.S. company manufactured machinery for uh, harvesting and processing of foods. The Canadian subsidiary sold and serviced its U.S. parents' products all, uh, all across Canada. And locally, that meant uh, grape harvesters and canning equipment to a few well-known names from the past that we know as, as Bright's Canning, Bright's Wines, Canadian Canners, and Powell Foods. Beyond Niagara, Eckerd provides machinery to harvest and process foods such as peas, beans, corn, and more. However, the times and the markets have drastically changed all across Canada, and this time, after running the Canadian sub the subsidiary for many years, Jim Eckert and his son Paul bought it from its U.S. parent in uh, 1985 plans to grow by broadening their product lines and markets. In 1986, the former U.S. parent company faced its own demise. Jim and Paul renamed the company to Eckert Machines Incorporated to underline and emphasize the difference of the now independent company, and there has been no looking back. Food processors have long appreciated the broad experience, long-term support, and commitment of Team Eckert Machines, uh, with good reason. Team Eckert is built on experience and understanding their customers' needs. Jim started his career as a, in a Canadian canners plant in Western Ontario in 1939. He moved across the table to machinery sales in 1961, and Paul traveled with Jim in the late 1960s, learning the business from a pro from the ground up. Paul continued that practice with his four sons in their teen years. In 1998, Eckert uh, discontinued offering harvesters to concentrate more fully on processing and materials handling. Now the family tradition continues. The third generation is active in the business. Two of Paul's sons, Stephen and David, are quickly taking on more responsibility and bringing their technological abilities to the table. In spite of today's uh, tough business climate, Eckert Machines stands ready and able to face the challenges of the next 50 years. It's my pleasure again to present to you this plaque celebrating uh, your 50th anniversary. Best wishes for many more years of success. One signed by myself, by, signed by myself, and members of council, presented to Eckert Machines Inc. Congratulations. It is kind of neat to, to bring on the boys, and uh, I thank you guys very much for this. It's, um, it's great to have the recognition. Uh, I just wish Dad was here. <laughs> um, and we've got a big thing for the Stephen and David to pick up and follow, and we're going to do our best for the next 50. <laughs> Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to ask Jennifer Hallman of BS Fox to join us. <laughs> Established in 1934, ES Fox Limited is a privately owned Canadian multi-trade company providing a single source for industrial, commercial, and institutional construction, fabrication, and service requirements. 
The strength of the company stems from the vast experience of its people, the integration of a variety of skilled trades, and its dedication to total control of construction through computerized training and monitoring techniques. The company is unique in that it is not only a, an industry leader in construction and engineering, but it is one of the country's major sheet metal vessel module and pipe fabricators. It has proven uh, quality standards, including ISO 9001 and 2000. The company uh, actually provides a wealth of experience in blending the endless variety of skills required for the execution of complex, multidisciplinary projects by a single contractor. The company has undertaken an ever-increasing number of total responsibility projects and can provide any combination of engineering, procurement, and construction skills that are needed. With over 75,000 square feet of production space, their fabrication divisions have the capability and capacity to handle the most sophisticated assignments, and their computerized scheduling uh, capabilities ensure their ability to complete a project within the projected time frame. The company employs mechanical, electrical, and civil engineers, affording them the capability of fulfilling customer design requirements. The caliber and depth of management expertise provides a wealth of knowledge which can be called upon to meet any challenge. DS Fox, through the years, has established a reputation for a high quality workmanship, engineering excellence, operational, operational flexibility, and efficiency, plus timely uh, project completion. Their vast experience and in house multi trade uh, disciplines, coupled with the company's related diversification qualities, certainly qualifies them to be considered a company of unique abilities. It's my pleasure to present this to you as well. Jennifer, if I may, present it to ES Fox Limited, celebrating your 75th anniversary. Best wishes for many more years of success, 1934 to 2009, side by myself and members of the council. Thank you very much. I'd like to uh, uh, thank the City of Niagara Falls for recognizing us. Uh, uh, I'm third generation, so it's a great honor for me and to accept this on behalf of the family as well as all the employees in this office. I just want to mention on behalf of Council, thank you very much for your contribution, your great corporate of citizens, and we do appreciate uh, your presence in our city as a quality, quality and valuable employer. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Matters. Mr. Clerk, uh, we have uh, a request for a, I guess, a deferral from our city solicitor with regard to the item AM2009-002. Could you address that, please? Uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Your Worship. In your handouts, uh, you'll see a, an email from Mr. Beeman, sort of a technical reason. Uh, we require an official plan amendment. Uh, this was discovered uh, after the matter had been uh, publicly advertised, so we apologize for any inconvenience and ask the council uh, defer the uh, public meeting and we'll bring it back at the next available opportunity as an official plan and zoning bylaw amendment. Do we need a motion, Mr. Clerk? To, to defer, yes. Yes, motion to defer, Councillor Thompson. Yes, just uh, before we have a motion to defer, um, through uh, your uh, Worship to uh, solicitor, um, the changes that we've been making with respect to uh, adult entertaining parlors, um, how does that impact on what we're doing? And is this a, a city initiated uh, um, issue? <coughs> Mr. Beeman? This is a city initiated uh, uh, zoning bylaw. Uh, and the um, as far as the adult entertainment, this does not affect the licensing issue. Um, uh, well, I, yeah, and I'm just talking about the numbers. Yeah, and the also numbers would not be affected by this. This is the areas <coughs> in which they can go, but the yeah. number is limited to three. I understand that. Yeah. Uh, how about the, uh, the massage parlors? Uh, is there an opportunity to uh, reduce the numbers there too? Uh, yes. I, I, the reason I'm suggesting is that uh, um, we have we, we've been mandated. Uh, to have these, we can we have the ability to license and, and inspect. Um, I'm, so, I'm sure that uh, there's not people out in our industrial subdivision who are dying to see this kind of uh, um, business located uh, next door to them, uh, and this could be uh, uh, certainly one of uh, concern to some of them. I'm wondering if we cannot uh, reduce the numbers, especially in that one area, also. 
We certainly can look at that, uh, Councillor. And okay. if the if yeah. council gives that well, permission, I recall, well, sir. I, rec I recall when we first started this business, uh, um, we wanted zero in the city of Niagara Falls, mm -hmm. and uh, we attempted to do that. And we were told uh, quickly by the provincial government, in fact, the Minister of Municipal Affairs, uh, that you do not have that option. You can license and inspect and regulate. Uh, so we tried for two. Uh, we were challenged with the bylaw. Uh, we lost, so we came back with five. So uh, that uh, number has uh, never been materialized. So uh, I think that's a great opportunity, as we did in the other category, to uh, downsize. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that would make uh, some people in the industrial subdivision happy, too. We can have that back for you as soon as possible. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. So a motion by Councillor Thompson to defer. Councillor Fisher seconds that motion. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Motion's carried. Mr. Clerk, would you introduce the next item on the agenda, please? Uh, Your Worship, a public meeting is now being convened to consider a proposed plan of condominium at 6128 Perkins Street. Notice was not required under the Planning Act, but was given as a courtesy to the existing residents on Wednesday, November 4th, 2009. Anyone who wants notice of Council's uh, decisions shall leave their name on the sign-in sheets outside the Council Chamber. At this time, I'm going to ask the Director of Planning to explain the purpose and the uh, for the application. Mr. Lewich. Excuse me, Your Worship. Thank you. This uh, application is uh, dealing with the uh, condominium conversion of a property on Perkins Street. The, um, uh, excuse me, the property is located on the south side of Perkins between Portage Road and Drummond Road. The um, area is largely uh, commercial. There are commercial properties to the uh, uh, to most sides around this property. It was actually built originally with uh, commercial uses on the first floor and apartments on the second and third floor. Um, the, it was later that the first floor was also converted into uh, apartment units. Um, the applicant is proposing to convert the 14-unit rental apartment building into a condominium. The condominium uh, process would allow individual ownership of each unit. Uh, this is the site plan for the property. Again, as I mentioned, it was intended originally to be a commercial property, so it's very close to the street. Um, the uh, parking on the site is, uh, is sufficient to serve the uh, site, and the, uh, there is a shed on the property, which, uh, would have to, which is outlined in red on the bottom left corner, which would also have to be recognized. There's no uh, public meeting notification process for condominium conversion, but it is Council's uh, procedure and practice uh, to uh, hold a public meeting, to notify the tenants, and to um, gather information as part as a courtesy. <coughs> Excuse me. The uh, owner had sent a letter to the tenants in July, um, and they also held a meeting with the tenants uh, earlier this month. In conducting our analysis, uh, we have concluded that the Residential Tenancy Act retains the right of tenants to remain in their units. The CMHC uh, vacancy rate is in excess of 3% and therefore complies with the city's official plan and the region's pol policy plan. The, uh, we have staff take a look at the amount of tax that's payable to the city as a current rental property versus condominium and the taxes are virtually equal and so it's a, a really a break-even situation. And then the uh, applicant will have three years to satisfy uh, conditions of draft plan approval. Uh, therefore, staff is recommending that council proceed with uh, <coughs> the plan of condominium as draft uh, to be draft approved, subject to the conditions set out in the report. Thank you very much, Mr. Hurlovich. Are there any questions by members of council of Mr. Hurlovich? Having seen none, then council will hear from anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak to the draft plan of condominium. Is there anyone present other than the applicant who wishes to speak to the draft plan of condominium? Once again, is there anyone present other than the applicant who wishes to speak to the draft plan of condominium? Having seen none, then council will now hear from the applicant or his representative. Your Worship, uh, members of council, it's nice Good to evening. be here. 
Um, I'm not going to say too much because I think Mr. Hulovich did an excellent job in this presentation. Uh, we've been through the, uh, the conditions and we support them. The only condition that we have in there that we, we question a little bit is the 5% for park dedication. Uh, Mr. Dibiase thinks he had paid that. He's got a canceled check for $6,000. If we can substantiate that we paid it, obviously. I talked to Rick Wilson about this this morning. He said, of course, they wouldn't ask for it if, they've, if we've already paid it. But if we haven't paid it, of course, we will we'll have to pay it, naturally. Uh, I really can't say anything else. I think it's a, it's a good building. It's, a, it's one that should be converted. Okay. And the questions by members of council? Mr. Rulovich, uh, we'd be able to determine if the, the fee has been paid yet at all? Yes, we'd be able to go through our records. Okay. Thank you. So, again, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your presence here this evening on behalf of Mr. DiBiase. My pleasure. Thank you. At this time, then, the public meeting uh, with respect to the proposed draft plan of, of condominium is now concluded. Pleasure of Council. Approved. Councilor Fisher. Moved by Councilor Fisher, seconded by Councilor Cario. Any further comments? Yes. Councilor Wing. I'm just, I was so delighted when I was reading my package to find that new section, financial implications, where staff actually looked at whether or not yes. it was going to have an impact on the revenue stream and just decided it wasn't. So I good can support this now that I have that information. Good. I think it's good information that staff has included. So that's great. Thank you. We'll call the vote then. All those in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you very much. Mr. Clerk, could you introduce the next item on the agenda, please? Worship a uh, public meeting is now being convened to consider a proposed amendment to the zoning to the city zoning bylaw to uh, recognize existing apartment and future apartment approval at 6515 McLeod Road, 6473, and 6483 McLeod Road. Notice was given by first class mail in accordance with the Planning Act on Friday, October 16th, 2009, and by posting a sign on the property in question. Anyone who wants notice of the passage of the zoning bylaw amendment to participate in any site plan process, if applicable, or preserve their opportunity to appeal to the Ontario Municipal Board, shall leave their name on the sign in sheets outside the council chamber. Thank you very much. And once again, I'm going to ask the Director of Planning to explain the purpose and the reason for the proposed bylaw amendment. Mr. Hurlovich. Thank you, Worship. Uh, this property is. Uh, for a uh, rezoning of three properties on um, the north side of McLeod Road. Uh, the largest of these uh, properties is the uh, apartment building known as the Bellagio. It's opposite uh, Wilson Crescent um, in the city. And adjacent to that, to the east, are uh, two small residential properties which are also uh, pictured in the slide in front of you. The um, property is located um, as I said, opposite uh, Wilson Crescent, uh, just to the uh, the west of Dell Avenue, and uh, again we can see the uh, the three uh, properties uh, pictured. The larger uh, block is the condominium with the Bellagio, and the two adjacent sites to the east. All three of these properties come under one uh, zoning, um, and uh, the applicant therefore was seeking to separate the zoning of the larger property and then retain the zoning on the two smaller properties. The uh, site plan is uh, configured so that the existing <coughs> Bellagio apartment building is um, shown on the left and the concept plan of what could happen um, on the adjacent two residential properties is shown on the right. So a um, small eight unit uh, building on the um, right hand side and the existing 64-unit building on the left-hand side. Okay. Um, the um, again, as I mentioned, the uh, entire property is uh, two acres in size, and the applicant is seeking a change to separate the uh, bylaw to recognize the existing buildings from the adjacent properties. 
the uh, just walk through the uh, existing approvals because I have had a number of calls as to how this uh, building actually uh, is in the configure that it, configuration it is today, and uh, I think it's important for people to to recognize because this uh, proposal how this development has been before council and uh, city committees a number of times. In 2000, council passed a bylaw to permit a 54-unit apartment building. In 2006. The Committee of Adjustment granted a variance to allow three additional units, making a total of 57. In 2007, Council again approved an addition of three more units to the apartment building while it was under construction, and it also approved a 12-unit building on the site that's now going to be eight. All of the lands were zoned together, which would have permitted a maximum of 72 units total on the entire site uh, during construction. Uh, the, the building went through a number of uh, iterations as the uh, developer uh, um, went from condominium to rental to condominium, and so therefore the, he um, reallocated the size of the units as he was looking at rental units, and so in essence he put 64 units into the Bellagio. That was fine according to zoning because the whole of the site allowed 72. Um, and that's how the building has been built. It does leave eight units then where on the adjacent property where originally 12 were proposed. So that's the, uh, the background on this. The uh, applicant then is therefore seeking to uh, separate the existing site uh, from the future site and have them function independently. Uh, part of the reasons is that uh, the apartment buildings um, the, the timing on the apartment building is not, he's not ready to build a second unit, and uh, would, he wants to uh, facilitate the registration of the unit that, or the building that's already constructed. Uh, so, therefore, he's requested an R5C zone to recognize the existing 64 unit five story building uh, with the zoning approvals and variances that have previously been granted. The uh, site specific provisions then would recognize a height of 17 meters, a lot coverage of 34% and a minimum landscaping of 38% and the requirement for a um, decorative front yard fence. The uh, rear and side yard setbacks have been adjusted uh, to accommodate uh, balcony and porch projections uh, into those required yards. They are allowed to have uh, porches project, however, these are slightly larger um, and it's because of the angle of the building. As well, they're looking for an adjustment on the parking. Again, by separating the property into two, um, two sites, they're actually uh, deficient by three parking spaces. Uh, the ratio that they're asking is uh, 1.35, whereas our bylaw requires 1.4. We don't have a rounding factor, otherwise 1.35 would round to 1.4. Um, so in essence, uh, they're looking for uh, a minor reduction of three spaces, which is acceptable. Um, the, um, the requested R5A zone for the uh, two uh, residential properties represents uh, the remaining potential that exists on the site and therefore that's uh, an eight-unit apartment building. Uh, the height and uh, dimensions would be those that are already existing, so a height of 12 meters or 40 feet, a rear yard depth of 15 meters or 49 feet, um, side yard width of seven meters, 23 feet, and uh, six-meter landscape strip along the front lot line. Uh, prior to construction on the site, staff would recommend that there be a deeming bylaw so that these, uh, by, these lots actually merge to eliminate any building code issues. <coughs> uh, the site plan for the property, there is an existing site plan agreement uh, for the McLeod Road um, property for the Bellagio. It includes changes to the and, uh, it includes changes to the parking layout, landscaping, and a uh, new site plan needs to be prepared for the balance of the property. Uh, should the amendment be uh, approved, changes will need to be made to the condominium approval for the description of the land. I recall council, I think um, it was last month, uh, granted the actual condominium approval. So we will have to uh, modify that to reflect uh, the new land area. Um, as well, uh, I've had a couple of calls about the uh, traffic lights at Wilson Crescent and uh, or Wilson, at Wilson Crescent and McLeod. Uh, McLeod Road is a regional road. It's the uh, higher uh, order road. 
and therefore the region is responsible for traffic signals. Uh, they're currently doing an environmental assessment of, of uh, McLeod Road and so therefore we don't know at this point whether or not traffic signals are warranted and whether or not there be a contribution. Since it's a regional responsibility, we're recommending that a condition be added into the draft plan of condominium that the developer provide a letter of credit to the region's satisfaction as a deposit towards the installation of the traffic lights at uh, McLeod and Wilson uh, if warranted. Um, the, um, we've concluded that the uh, zoning amendment can be approved because the application reflects the existing development on the site and previously approved zoning uh, provisions. As well, the uh, zoning will facilitate the registration of the condominium for the property at 6515 McLeod Road, the Bellagio. Therefore, staff is recommending that council approve the zoning amendment application to change the site-specific apartment zoning for the overall property to a site-specific R5C zone for the existing building and an R5A zone for the future apartment building uh, on McLeod Road. And the council passed the bylaws which are included in your uh, agenda tonight. Those are the highlights. Thank you very much, Mr. Herlovich. And members of the public are advised that failure to make an oral or written submission at this public meeting will result in the Ontario Municipal Board dismissing any referral it receives. Failure to, failure to sign the sign-in sheets will result in staff rejecting an appeal as per section 34, subsection 19 of the Planning Act. At this time, council will hear from anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak to the proposed bylaw amendment. Is there anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak to the proposed bylaw amendment? The third time, is there anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak to the proposed bylaw amendment? Having seen none, then council will now hear from the applicant or his representative. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council and staff. My name is Chris Miller. I'm a planner with Upper Canada Consultants uh, here representing the clients uh, on this zoning amendment application. Welcome. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Herlovich uh, for providing the synopsis. He seems to have covered it all off with chronology. Um, and you will have heard uh, from the presentation that staff are, in fact, uh, in support of the applications for the reasons that he had, uh, had just mentioned. Uh, I'd just like to take the opportunity to uh, uh, also convey that we've read the report uh, that he's referred to as, as coming later in the agenda, and we uh, concur with the recommendations that are, are within. Uh, however, we'd just like to make a comment on the uh, uh, traffic signals uh, that were there. Um, my client has been uh, has stated, I guess, on numerous occasions in the past that a commitment of $25,000 is, is on the table towards traffic lights if they are, uh, in fact, um, found warranted for this. And I think that uh, what um, Mr. Herlovich is, is referring to and what staff is referring to is trying to find a mechanism uh, to sort of formalize that because it's, it's always just been out on the table. Now, uh, it is a regional responsibility and the EA is underway and that uh, ultimately the EA will determine whether or not the, the lights are warranted at Wilson and uh, McLeod. And uh, um, I think that uh, through the recommendation or what Mr. Hurlich has recommended is through a, uh, a condition of, of draft approval when we come back for the modifications to the draft plan as a letter of credit. Uh, we really have no objection to that. However, if there are opportunities for us to speak with the region, perhaps there's another mechanism or another vehicle we can use to allocate or commit those funds, the $25,000, um, if warranted, uh, rather than having to tie up securities. It's just an option. We're, we're open, but we would like to just have the opportunity to speak to the region about you know, whether or not they'd be uh, amenable to perhaps a, a letter of undertaking or some other, some, some other form. But uh, basically, uh, that's it. We, uh, we support the recommendations as written, and we think that you have a wonderful example of residential infill on McLeod Road, and hopefully uh, it will be referenced in future. Thank so, you much, uh, Mr. Miller. Perhaps questions? you can have our solicitor give a comment with respect to the undertaking. Uh, is there any preferred uh, option the city the would like to see? The preferred option of municipalities is always to get security. Um, undertakings and so on uh, have proven historically to be of little worth. Uh, the thing to have is a letter of credit. That way you can get it done. Okay, thank you. Any questions from members of council? Councillor Fisher. Thank you. It was back in 2000 that 
the first time that the uh, proposal came. Mm -hmm. And at, that was the time when Mr. Pingyu promised the 25,000 for stoplights. <clears throat> at that time, I was very concerned, and I still am, because of the school that's in the very proximity, and it makes a turn onto Wilson Crescent. I believe the stoplights are absolutely crucial, whether region believes it or not. The traffic on McLeod Road is very quick, and there's another proposal across the street for condominiums. So um, I would like to see that letter of credit be to the region right away, so that we will, and also an indication that the stoplights are very important for school safety. So that would be something I would like you to do for me. Well, certainly, yeah, okay. Certainly the, uh, the EA process will have all the all the comments coming out of in the region. I do believe that the, those, uh, they're probably a couple months away before the, the, uh, uh, the report is, is released draft. So we are a few months from, from getting uh, their assessment on that. But I, uh, I hear, hear you on your letter of credit call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you much, uh, Mr. Miller. Is there any other questions from members of council? Having seen none, then the public meeting with respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is now concluded. Pleasure, Council. Moved by Councillor Peter Angel, seconded by Councillor Diodati. You moving the recommendation? Correct. Okay. Any further discussion or comment? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Clerk, could you introduce the next item, agenda, please? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Your Worship, a uh, public meeting is now being convened to consider a proposed amendments to the city's zoning bylaw. These are general amendments that uh, the planner will uh, outline during his uh, presentation. Uh, because of the nature of the amendments, uh, a uh, letter, uh, a prepaid first class mail was sent to certain agencies that might have an interest in the matter and an advertisement and notice was uh, published in the Niagara Falls Review on October 17, 2009. Anyone who wants notice of the passage of the zoning bylaw amendment uh, or preserve their opportunity to appeal to the Ontario Municipal Board shall leave their name on the sign-in sheets outside the council chamber. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Fisher, do you have a question? I would just like to make it known that I live on Lyons Creek at Montrose Road and Sodom Road. Okay. Are you declaring conflict or are you just... Yes. Okay. Conflict uh, declared by Councillor Fisher. This time I'm going to ask the uh, Director of Planning to explain the purpose and the reason of, for the proposed bylaw amendment. Uh, Mr. Hurlovich, once again. Thank you, Your Worship. As uh, the clerk outlined, these are uh, housekeeping matters that uh, staff have been working on to uh, bring the bylaw into more contemporary standards. The, um, prop the zoning changes actually affect everything that's highlighted in, in blue, so not only uh, Councillor Fisher's house, but probably everybody else's property sits on council. Mm -hmm. they, they're just general changes. The, um, the um, proposed zoning amendment is to bring in, as I uh, suggested, contemporary definition for a personal service shop, uh, group home, and adjust the road widening uh, requirements mm -hmm. that are currently spelled out under the official plan into our zoning bylaw. The uh, zoning bylaw already includes uh, definitions that set out the nature of specific uses, and uh, this is to assist the uh, public and businesses in better understanding our expectations. And then uh, last but not least is that the uh, uh, changes are um, being done partially to reflect official plan um, changes that have also occurred. The uh, first change is with personal service shops. Personal service shops are permitted in all commercial zones. The definition of personal service shop uh, groups a number of, um, of different types of uses together, cosmetic services uh, for people, um, pets, uh, alterations of clothing, shoes. Uh, so we wish to expand that definition to also include uh, tanning studios, uh, tattoo uh, studios, uh, dog obedience classes, as they are all similar kind of uh, services to uh, personal service shop definition. Uh, so the expanded uh, personal service shop, uh, as you can see, includes uh, everything from a barber, hairdresser, beautician, as well as a laundromat, dry clean. Those are all in there existing. So we're adding tanning, uh, salon, tattoo studio, and a place for dog uh, obedience classes. We already permit 
uh, dog grooming under this uh, definition. Um, the sale of merchandise would be limited to an accessory uh, use under those uh, personal services provided. We're also uh, seeking to uh, amend uh, the definition of group homes. Uh, typically, group homes are permitted in residential zones, anywhere that there would be a one-family detached or a semi-detached or duplex dwelling. Uh, there are currently five definitions uh, in the zoning bylaw, which refer to different provincial legislation, none of which is in effect. Uh, basically, has uh, rendered our interpretation useless. Uh, so, therefore, we're uh, opting for a more contemporary standard, where we'd have um, a uh, group home uh, de defined as a type one that would uh, provide then for uh, people who are living together and are licensed, supervised, approved under the federal government, um, three to eight people, exclusive of staff, and living under responsible supervision because of their uh, intellectual, mental health, social, physical condition, or legal status, um, require a group living environment, but it would not include a type two uh, group home, which I'll get to in a second. Um, the purpose in, in differentiating is that a type group, ho uh, type two group home, uh, would not um, accommodate anyone who's on probation or uh, for parole. Uh, so, in, in uh, essence, uh, uh, halfway houses and that type of thing. So, a group home type two uh, would mean a licensed, supervised, approved, funded. Uh, under the federal and provincial statute, uh, three to eight persons exclusive of staff um, who have been placed on probation, released from parole, um, re released or non parole under a provincial or federal statute, or youth who have been uh, charged under the provincial or federal statute and have been uh, placed in detention or custody. The type two group home is not. Um, being allowed in any specific zone, it's actually there to uh, counter the um, the type one group home, where we say type one group home is this, that, and the other thing, but it is not uh, a halfway house. And so we need group home type two in the bylaw in order to complete that definition. Um, that doesn't preclude, as it hasn't precluded for probably the last 20 or 30 years, anyone from coming into the city and specifically applying for. Um, a type two group home. I believe in my 20 years here, I think we've had one or two applications for a, a type two group home, which were ultimately turned down due to uh, resident opposition. Um, the current definitions provide uh, for three to six persons in a group home in a uh, detached dwelling and three to eight in a semi-detached. So we've lumped those together uh, as three to eight um, for the purposes of, uh, of ease of administration, and again, it meets uh, current requirements. You recall at the last council meeting, council actually referred, uh, approved a group home for um, 10 residents. Um, the parking requirements are currently under study, and we'll report back to council on that at a later date. Uh, as well, one of the changes we're doing is uh, the bylaw currently provides for uh, protection of road widenings. Uh, those go back to 1979 when they were first introduced. Uh, many of those standards have changed. Some have become wider, some have become narrower. And in 2006, uh, we updated the official plan uh, with, uh, with new standards. And um, we thought we would have had our uh, updated zoning bylaw by now. Uh, it hasn't come in. We're still working with our consultant on that. So we're um, advancing this as a site-specific housekeeping matter, as I say, so that we will be introducing the same chart that's in the official plan into the zoning. And uh, in many cases, there are actually uh, lesser um, setbacks required for buildings on those properties. Um, therefore, these are uh, changes that reflect a more contemporary definition of personal service shops group home and update the uh, uh, road allowance requirements. And therefore, we're recommending the council approve the zoning amendment application to update those definitions. And there is a bylaw on council's agenda tonight. Those are the highlights. Thank you very much, Mr. Hilvich. And once again, members of the public are advised that failure to make an oral or written submission at this public meeting will result in the Ontario Municipal Board dismissing any referral that it receives. Failure to sign the sign-in sheets will result in staff rejecting an appeal as per section 34 subsection 19 of the Planning Act. At this time, Council will hear from anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak to the proposed bylaw amendment. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak to the proposed bylaw amendment? 
for the third time. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak to the proposed bylaw amendment? Having seen none, then council will proceed. Uh, Mr. Hurlovich, do we have any other comments to make? Members of council, do you have any questions uh, at this point? Councillor Maves? Well, I'll just I'll close the meeting first if we can. Then at this point, the uh, public meeting with respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is now concluded. Councillor Maves? Move the recommendation. Seconded by Councillor Cario. Any further discussion or comment? Having seen none, all those in favor? The motion is carried. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, would you introduce the next item on the agenda, please? Uh, the next item is a matter that's been uh, deferred twice. It was at uh, community services two meetings ago, and what it is is the proposed change from residential loan to residential grant to encourage the renovation of older apartments and unused vacant space above businesses along Queen Street and Erie Avenue. Um, it was uh, at community services two meetings ago. It was deferred so it could be brought up to uh, open council upstairs. Uh, we did advertise the last time the uh, matter was coming. Uh, it was deferred because of the absence, absences of uh, Councillor Iannone and Councillor Cario. Um, there was no one present at that time on the item. We haven't re-advertised it for tonight uh, because of that reason, but it's back for council's consideration. Councillor Diodati. Yes, Your Worship, I would make motion for deferral uh, to the uh, November 30th workshop night where we could probably uh, better address the uh, issue and make a more informed decision. You have a motion to defer. Is there a seconder to that motion? Councillor Thompson seconds the motion. There's no debate. Uh, we'll call the vote. All those in favor of deferral? Well, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Opposed? Three. The motion's carried. Thank you very much. That's deferred then till November 30th. Is that correct? Councillor, November 30th? Councillor Giadetti? November 30th, is that? 30th, yeah. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Clerk? That's fine. Will this be part of the one hour session or will it be separate from the one hour session? Well, I Councilor? think that'd be separate. Part of the regular council meeting. <laughs> Well, perhaps it can be incorporated if there's a... Whatever works for the clerks. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. I have some comments as well, then, members of council. Uh, I'd like to uh, report on several positive events that have recently taken place in Niagara Falls. Uh, the opening of the Winter Festival of Lights in Queen Victoria Park was an exceptional evening of entertainment, including the Niagara Star Singers, the cast from O Canada A, the Wendy Leard School of Dance, the Winter Festival of Lights Choir, a cappella Niagara and of course Greg Cruin and his assistants. We also had the honor, I also had the honor to join uh, with the host our uh, Niagara College for a historic event in welcoming uh, His Royal Highness Prince Charles to the school for a tour of their new wine visitor and education center. This was an extraordinary opportunity to showcase the college and the students. I'd like to remind everyone again of this year's Santa Claus Parade being held on Saturday, November 28th, beginning at 11 a.m. at the corner of Victoria and Armory Streets, winding its way down to City Hall. Project Share will be picking up food donations along the parade route, and Canada Post will be picking up letters for Santa Claus at City Hall and a gazebo near, the, uh, near Valleyway and Queen. Free Tim Hortons hot chocolate, Timbits, and face painting will again <coughs> be available this year. Another exciting event in Niagara will be the official opening of the Niagara Parks Commission and the Winter Festival of Lights Rink by the Brink Open Air Skating Rink in Queen Victoria Park on December 13th. This is sure to be a, a uniquely Canadian experience for our locals and visitors alike. And finally, the signs are up, the interest is growing, and the movement across the globe with the Olympic uh, flame is getting closer to Niagara Falls. I encourage everyone to show their civic and Canadian pride on the night of December 20th by being a part of a very unique celebration in our city. The Vancouver 2010 Olympic torch relay represents an incredible opportunity to gather as a community with all Canadians to express tremendous pride in our country and our city. Please invite everyone you know to come and cheer on the Olympic torch run as it passes through Niagara Falls on Sunday, December 20th, beginning at 6 p.m. And soon the routing will be announced, but most certainly the party in the park to celebrate uh, this momentum event at the brink uh, of the falls will be spectacular. And I thank you for your comments. It's uh, for my 
Uh, these are my comments this evening. I have one other announcement to make, a public uh, service announcement. For those who are interested in the H1N1 uh, flu immunization clinics, uh, there are now, um, it's available to all in Niagara who wish to have it. There are a number of locations, I should point out, November 16th uh, from 1 to 7 in Niagara Falls at Niagara Square, uh, Montrose Road, uh, 1 to 7 p.m. November 16th. Also on November 17th, uh, same place, 1 to 7 Niagara Falls in Niagara Square. Uh, November 18th, same uh, location, but 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Niagara Falls, Niagara Square. For those who may be interested. <laughs> Next, we have uh, communications and comments to the city clerk. Item number one is Chippewa Volunteer Firefighters Association request for waiver of fees for the annual slow pitch tournament. Moved by Councillor Peter Angelo, seconded by yes. Councillor Fisher. You and wish I'd to make, like comment? make a comment? After Please you take the vote. Okay. Any other comments? After. Yeah. After. Okay. All right. Uh, any other comments from members of council? Having seen none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you. May I make a comment? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very pleased to say that the Chippewa Volunteer Fire Department have been requested again this year to be the Grand Marshals in the United States with the fire truck that was in the um, um, Christmas story. So again this year, they're going to transport the truck down into the States Men are going with it, I think three or four, and they're providing all the financing to go. And I'm very pleased to tell you that Rob Nicholson has provided a Canadian flag and over 100 pins, and uh, Kim Crater has provided me with another 100 pins, and the city has provided me with some pins. So I think they've become um, really a benefit to our city and I'm very proud of them and everything they do. So that beautiful truck is now representing us again. So compliments to the fire department. Thank you. Item number two is a great uh, a request from Great Wolf Lodge requesting that fireworks display be allowed for the hotel guests on December 31st. Moved by Councillor Iannone, seconded by Councillor uh, Diodati. Any comments or questions by members of council? Having seen none, all those in favor? The motion is carried. Item number three, Correctional Service Canada uh, re communities responding to human needs are requesting November 15th to 22nd, 2009 be proclaimed as Restorative Justice Week in the City of Niagara Falls. Moved by Councillor Iannone, seconded by Councillor Peter Angelo. Any comments or questions? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Mr. Clerk, any, any uh, other <coughs> items for Council's consideration? Uh, yes, Your Worship. Just one item, um, more of a uh, committee related matter. Um, Staff is going to uh, call a meeting of the ad hoc uh, committee on the armory. Uh, there's three members of council on that. Unfortunately, uh, one of our council members is deemed it advisable to step off the committee because of a conflict of interest, and uh, therefore we need a replacement to uh, bring the committee back to its full complement of uh, three members. So I would ask. I just want to qualify then, please, the, the two members that are already on. Uh, already is uh, Bart and uh, Vince. So. Uh, Councilor Kerr and Councilor Maves, yeah. and we have a potential conflict uh, for Council Wing. Is that correct? Correct. So we just need a volunteer. Would somebody like to sit on that committee for three? And and just to uh, make you aware, we're foreseeing that it's probably just going to be a one meeting commitment. So we're not uh, foreseeing that it's good. You know, trust you. Trust me. Councilor Thompson volunteers. Thank you. So we have our committee. Do we need a motion for that? Yeah, just a motion. We have a motion to have Councilor Thompson moved by Councilor Iononi, second by Councilor Diodetti. You've heard the motion. All those in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you. Move on to reports. I'm going to ask for ratification of Community Services Committee actions. I'll call on the chair, Councillor Iannone. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The following items are to be ratified from November 16, 2009. Meeting of the Community Services Committee. Under minutes, that the minutes of November 2nd, 2009 be adopted as recorded. Under reports, PD 2009-91, James Oswald fence with stone wall. 2922 St. Paul Avenue that the committee recommended to council that it reconsider its August 10th, 2009 decision and that the committee recommend that the council approve option two subject to an agreement with the owners of the James Oswald House, 2922 St. Paul Avenue under PD 2009-92, Willoughby Township Hall Roof Reshingling. Uh, 11211 Sodom Road that council consider the recommendation from the Municipal Heritage Committee to approve the reshingling work proposed by Dominion Roofing for the former Willoughby Township Hall. 
under PRC 2009-33, playing field user fees, one that council approved playing field user fees and guidelines as indicated in the report with the effective date of January 1st, 2010. Two, that staff investigate the development of a sports tourism policy for the City of Niagara Falls. And if any organization wishes to enter into a formal agreement with the City of Niagara Falls, that staff is authorized to do so. Under TS 2009-41, High Coop Crescent Parking Review, that a permit parking zone be established on the south side of High Coop Crescent between a point 120 meters east of Parkside Road and a point 136 meters east of Parkside Road. TS 2009-49, Crawford Street Parking Control Review, that the existing permit parking control on the north side of Crawford Street between Confederation Avenue and a point 90 meters east of Confederation Avenue be removed. Under TS 2009-46, 2008 motor vehicle collision report that the council received the report for information of purposes, and I so move. Moved by Councillor Iononi, seconded by Councillor Peter Angelo. Any comments or questions? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. And now call on the Chair of the Corporate Services Committee, Councillor Peter Angelo. Thanks, Your Worship. There are two sets of ratifications that I have, one for November 9th. I'll read those first. Report F-2009-56, dealing with 2010 permissive grants process. It's recommended that Council receive the report for information. Under our 2010 funding request, that the 2010 budget funding request from the Niagara Falls Library Board, Niagara Falls Board of Museums, Niagara Falls Tourism, Winter Festival of Lights, Boys and Girls Club, Project Share, Women's Place of South Niagara, YWCA Niagara Region, Greater Niagara General Hospital Foundation, Niagara Falls Art Gallery, Niagara Falls Concert Band, Wing Royal Canadian Air Force Association, St. John Ambulance, Stanford Centre Volunteer Firemen's Association, Niagara Falls Badminton Club, Niagara Falls Horticultural Society, Niagara Falls Lawn Bowling Club, Niagara Falls Summer Swim Lessons, Stanford Lions Club, Village of Chippewa Citizens Committee, and the Niagara District Art Association be received and referred to final budget deliberations. And under new business from our last meeting, it was recommended that Council waive the fees associated with the road closure on St. Clair Avenue for the opening of the Aleph Champ Hebrew School, and also that staff work with the downtown BIA on incorporating the BIA's proposed workshop into the agenda of a future Council meeting. I'll read the ratification from this evening, Your Worship, first that the minutes from November 2nd and November 9th be adopted as recorded under report CPS 2009-08 dealing with the Niagara Falls Humane Society. It's recommended that Council approve the dog licensing fees proposed and that the recommendations on a five-year forgivable mortgage, animal control, pound keeper fees, and the request for a charitable grant be referred to budget deliberations. Next report, CD 2009-15, dealing with the 2010 Council schedule. It was recommended that Council, or sorry, the committee recommend to Council that we approve the 2010 Council schedule and that staff ensure Kojiko's availability for budget meetings, and if they are not available, that the budget meetings be scheduled on a Council night. The last item, Your Worship, was uh, FS 2009-09, dealing with the radio system for the fire services. It was recommended that Council approve the expenditure of $2,167,778.98 for the replacement of the Niagara Falls Fire Services radio system and that the Mayor and Clerk be authorized to execute all related agreements and I would so move the minutes. Moved by Councillor Peter Angel, seconded by Councillor Diodati. Once again, any questions or comments from members of Council? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Move on to uh, the consent agenda. Move the consent agenda. Move, move the entirety by Councillor Kerry, or seconded by Councillor Iannone. Uh, any discussion? Councillor Fisher. I would like to speak on the docks, please. Um, I'd like to have it lifted. Yes, please. Okay, if you just hold for a moment then, please. Bart, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, it's okay. We'll just we'll lift it. Thank you. Okay, we'll deal with the um, with the others uh, first. Okay, we have a motion before us. All those in favor? Motion's carried. Now we'll move on to PRC 2009-31, Chippewa Boat Dock, Councillor Fisher. Thank you. Um, the boat dock says, you read in the report, uh, the BIA purchased them uh, several years ago to enhance the downtown uh, environment. And uh, they were put in front of the river, riverside, and Sam Bielich, uh took good care of them. Uh, he supervised them, he made sure they were in good shape, and also they were vandalized many times, and he put them back in place with the fire department. They were broke loose, he put them back in place with the fire department. The last time they broke loose, 
Sam decided that it was time for, to quit and he didn't want the responsibility anymore. Now they are sitting <coughs> at the boat docks in front of my house. So, and I know because they're sitting there, there are people interested in purchasing parts or as much as they can purchase of these docks. And also I believe the dock committee would be very interested in the docks because that those docks are very well built extreme and it seems to me to decommission them or whatever you want to do with them would be uh, really not a good thing it would be a sad thing so I really believe that we should have a motion to advertise to the public uh, the docks for sale and also the boat do uh, the boat not the boat club but the um, dock association should be aware of this I really believe that because there is public interest and there is the dock uh, association that would have an interest in that. So I would make that motion that we do not decommission them, we put them for sale. Okay, moved by Councillor Fisher that the dock, uh, the docks that are surplus be uh, offered for sale. Seconded by Councillor Thompson, you wish to speak uh, to that? Uh, yes, I, I, I'm wondering uh, with uh, Councillor Fisher's permission, if we could have a report back from staff indicating whether the uh, dock uh, at the dock area it could be extended and utilized there uh, rather than saying we're going to sell them at this point yep. maybe we could have a report back examining all aspects of them certainly the the dock yes. association would be interested in uh, knowing what's going to happen with them but i i think they're valuable and can be utilized in uh, something to benefit the boaters in the area uh, for the municipality, so I'd prefer a report back so we can uh, determine the best use for Perhaps then, uh, Councillor Thompson, uh, Councillor Fisher, be advised that we shouldn't advertise them for sale yet because we should have a report back first yeah. investigating yes. the possibility. And I agree with Councillor Thompson because I don't think we've viewed the boat uh, ramp in front of the dock, uh, our boat ramp. I think we need to look at those. Uh, those slips because a couple years ago we had boards missing and we had to go down and replace them. So I think we should review uh, the boat slips right in front of uh, the boat ramp first and then we should continue. But I don't want to see this dock decommissioned. They're too well built. Perhaps then the, uh, the staff could be directed to do a report back to council before we decide any disposition. Okay, is that okay with the mover and seconder? All right, and then any comments from members of council further? Having seen none, all those in favor of the motion? Thank you, the motion is carried. Move on to resolutions. Uh, we have a resolution, therefore, be resolved that the City of Niagara Falls, uh, Niagara Falls City Council chooses Highway 420 to be designated as Niagara Memorial Veterans Highway. Any comments? A resolution to be moved yeah. by? Your Worship, all I'll do is, I guess, thank Mr. Arafita for his time. Um, okay. And this was the uh, this was the name, just to let all the council know, that came back as the uh, as the highest vote getter from the last three names that we had. And we'll so, supply that resolution once it's second. endorsed to the upper levels of government. So moved by Councillor Peter Anzo, seconded by Councillor Vic Lidiadati. Fine, thank you. Any further comments or questions? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you. Move on to bylaws. Uh, Mr. Clerk, are there any additional bylaws or amendments to the bylaws for Council's consideration this evening? Uh, yes, Your Worship. Um, bylaw 2009-177, uh, you'll note there's a number of uh, attachments uh, that are in your handouts that go with that bylaw, so that's just an addition to that one. Uh, in light of the deferred public meeting, bylaw 2009-181 is uh, pulled. So therefore, the uh, monies bylaw and the uh, confirmatory bylaw will shift up one number uh, each. Okay, thank you. I have a motion to introduce the bylaws. Bylaw, if you give in a first reading, moved by Councillor Peter Angel, seconded by Councillor Diodati. Council has heard the motion. Any questions or comments? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Bylaws 2009-174 to 2009-182, read a first time. Thank you. Can I have a motion to give the bylaws a second and third reading? Moved by Councillor Peter Angel, seconded by Councillor Diodati. Once again, Council has heard the motion. Any comments or further questions? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion bylaws, is carried. Sorry, bylaws 2009-174 to 2009-182, read a second and third time and passed. Thank you. Any new business this evening? Councillor Anoni. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We had delivered to us in our in our council additions 
a very interesting letter from the Ontario Medical Association. Um, they have requested that they appear at our council meeting of November 30th to make full oral submissions on the issue of the ER and the ER um, realignment of docs and the doctors leaving and the information presented to us here from the NHS and from Dr. Dubinsky. And actually, I think, I don't know how many councils actually get something from the OMA asking to come to speak, but it's a very critical report of the presentation made I think by the NHS and, and quite frankly the OMA signs off that says um, as a result of the NHS administration action several dedicated and competent emergency doctors were lost by a community which valued and supported them and unfortunately the Niagara Falls community is unlikely to see stable emergency physician staffing for years to come with a continuous risk of, of imminent department closure. This is the Ontario Medical Association. So I make a motion that we ask this gentleman, just let me get back to it, uh, Dr. Myron Halleck to come before council on November 30th and make a presentation. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? Councilor Wing, any discussion or comment? Yes, Mr. Clerk. Um, just a comment, uh, we have related to the downtown issue, we have tried to keep the 30th clear of uh, deputations to accommodate that one hour session with the downtown. So I don't know how uh, tied they are to the 30th, whether they could come at, a, at the meeting in December. I just put that into uh, Council's uh, consideration. I think that's uh, probably wise advice. Uh, perhaps we can allow the clerk to, I, I don't think we've all had a chance to read the letter, but certainly we can add, add the clerk contact the doctor to find out. To and I'd also ask for a copy of the letter because it was just distributed to council, not to staff. Okay, thank you. Councilor Ioni. To that, I don't mind moving it just to the next meeting in December, but on the part of staff not getting it, I, I think if council gets a registered letter, maybe we could get it before the two weeks is up until our next council package comes. Or, like, I don't mind coming down to pick something like this up. And, like, a point in fact, I mean, we did get an invitation to a restaurant opening that we got in our council package after the restaurant opening. We did get a notification of the Chippewa Veterans uh, presentation in the Chippewa Arena the Monday after it happened. Yeah. If it's time sensitive, maybe we could get it beforehand. Through the chair, that arrived this afternoon, so okay, you definitely got you. it timely. Uh, we don't open your mail, plain and simple. We don't open your mail, and we won't open your mail. So unfortunately, organizations have to be mindful of the fact if they send something to you, you're not picking it up every day. So I don't know how to get that word out, but the fact of the matter is we're not going to open your mail. Well, that's fine. And, Councillor, we did advise uh, the members of council with regard to the Chippewa as well, the, uh, the memorial service was being held. We do our best to try to advise them of that. So, okay, any other business? No, we didn't vote on this. No, you didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, the that's right. You're correct. Motion on the floor. Any further comments or questions? Having seen none, all those in favor? One, two. Please hold your hands. One, two, three, four. Watch oh, something. Mr. Dennis, thank you. New, Councilor Diodati. <clears throat> thank you, Worship. Just quickly to announce, maybe uh, councillors have seen it in the in the paper, the third annual uh, Toys for Tickets campaign has started. So anybody receiving a parking ticket from November the 9th through December the 4th are able to pay their ticket with a uh, gift, uh, unwrapped toy uh, of equal or greater value or a gift card that um, in the end will benefit Project Share uh, or the Salvation Army, depending on what their donation is. So just a reminder. And Great. also, Your Worship, in past, typically uh, the tickets were overpaid by approximately 30%. So it's obvious people, as much as they don't like getting parking tickets, uh, they're willing to give more when it goes to, uh, to the kids. Sure. That's good news. Thank you. Okay, motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Carrier, second by Councillor Mays. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you very much.